Uh, good morning, my name is Tom Grafton. I'm the owner and operator of Jerry's Broken Drill and Tap Removal. I've owned and operated this same business for 40 years. Everything on the table is grounded. Because this is sitting on wood, we need to run an auxiliary ground to it. This port down here accepts the auxiliary ground strap. So we don't need to be touching metal to metal. We don't need the piece that I'm working on to be touching the base of the machine in order to get a ground. And grounds it directly through an auxiliary ground being the cable. Now, this particular part, or steel casting, has a 5 16 18 broken tap located right here in this circle. So at this point is when you determine what size electrode, which is molybdenum tubing, a hole through the tap that gets you into the fluted area of the tap, basically burning out the tap. A hole large enough through there that doesn't touch the threads, but makes a hole big enough so that you have just pieces of the tap, which are called flutes, that are left. And then at that point, we take small hardened round chisels and knock the remaining pieces out. Okay, the electrode size is 5 30 seconds or 0.156 diameter. That will give me a large enough hole inside this tap to leave the remains of the flutes of the tap. After this hole is burnt through the tap, um, staying completely away from the threads, it'll leave flutes. Okay, the next step would be to measure the depth. In this, in this particular job, we don't need a print. If this was one single hole in this part, then I'd need a print that would specify the depth of the hole. We can find our depth for the hole with the broken tap by checking one of the other holes. So the maximum depth that this tap could be broken would be one inch between the surface and the depth of that hole. Could be halfway through, it could be broken off on the bottom, but it's important to know how deep to go. This putty or clay that I put up here is not necessary. I, I do it only to divert the water from flooding the entire part and direct it more towards this side makes it less of a mess and that's the reason for the putty. Now at this point we line the electrode up with the center of the tap. We have already adjusted our vibration. The next step is to select the heat range with this dial right here, we'll probably, will pull, not probably, we'll positively pull between 125 and 150 amps, which is exactly what we need for burning the size hole with this electrode. Okay, the next step, I, I need to cover the, uh, the electrode because there's water, what, what burns the hole is the action of the heat at the very tip of the electrode and, and water pumped through the center of hollow electrodes at about 15 pounds PSI. And the action of the arc uh, the, and, and the water does the, the, the burning or powder, powderization of the, of the material that's in here, in this case, the tap. What I'll do now is make one burn
turn the machine off, you always double check your center, which is uh, perfect. So at this point, we wrap it back up and we continue burning. I'll show you a little bit of the uh, arcing that's going on. That's burning a hole through the tap. I just fell through the tap, so that tells me that the tap is broken off shallow, not near the finished depth of 1 inch 100. Move the machine out of the way. Now we'll blow out the hole. Grab the hardened round chisels that is equal to the hardness of the tap. These are made out of a material called M2 and they're heat treated to about 62 Rockwell. So it doesn't just bust the end off, it keeps a fairly clean end and grabs the tap without doing too much damage to the, to the rod. You have to grind this rod so it has a clean corner, Grind it at approximately 45 degrees. So that's one rod I'll use. Two different size hardened rods for this job. This size I'll use to get started tapping out the remaining portion of the, of the threads. What we have remaining are the remnants, which are basically the flutes of the tap. We take our sharp, round, hardened chisels and we start picking the pieces of the tap out. These are also magnetized, as you can see. They grab those pieces. Not all of them, but some of them. We'll blow out one more time. There. There's pieces of the tap. You can see the flutes, the threads. That's what's known as the flute of the tap right there that's left, those little pieces. You can see the threads. On the inside, you can see where the burn took place. There's one more piece. We've got a little bit left in this hole. We'll take the larger chisel. Blow it out one more time. Excuse me. Then just to ensure that the hole is clean, I'll grab a tap and chase the thread. Now that we have all the tap out of there, that the hole is clean of all debris and the tap, we will put a new tap in there to the point where that tap broke, ensuring that all the tap is out and the threads are clean. After that, we'll blow time so that the hole is clean. We'll draw a little circle around it so the customer knows exactly which hole we worked on and that job is finished. Except for taking it off the machine. So now it's on to the next tab. Thank you very much. <laughs> Got one more coming your way.